I will talk about uh, uh, how to improve uh, and scaling up this forest land restoration uh, mechanisms. Uh, as the previous speakers tried to explain, uh, this is one of the FLR methods that will be used mainly to restore uh, degraded lands. So if we have to use it and scale up to a large scale, then we need to improve uh, and uh, scale, in, scale it up uh, in a better way. <clears throat> so, uh, well, there is the NDD, uh, it's already explained. So, to define exclosures are uh, areas normally uh, initiated uh, by the community because of the large uh, deforestation and degradation uh, faced in their own community because uh, communities had uh, only two options, either to resettle to other productive area or to settle in their area. So the communities opt for restore their site and uh, uh, rehabilitate so that they can uh, stay on their uh, mainland. So that's why they develop this uh, exclosure mechanism. So it's mainly initiated by the communities themselves and we experts and the governments, we are trying to learn from what the community did. So generally, it's not kind of uh, fenced by concrete or other means, but it's essentially fenced by by law set up by the communities themselves. Uh, so we can see, for example, how it was uh, in 1975 and now into 2006, only done by the community uh, by contributing about 40 to 60 days uh, per year free labor and also similar uh, landscapes were changed into green. So uh, Ethiopia, as the previous speaker said, plans to rehabilitate this 50 million he hectare. So the only viable option we think could be uh, one of them could be exclosures. But to achieve these targets, uh, I think we need to identify and scaling up effective restoration practices. That's the exclosure. But not as it is, we have to improve it. So we had a project to identify the improvement measures that we could make uh, in these exclosures. So we, this study focused on review and document relevant experiences and identify ex effective practices on exclosures, identify enabling conditions for scaling up, and uh, contribute to building up the knowledge of uh, these po policymakers so that we can expand to the rest uh, of the country because this is mainly effective in the northern part of uh, the country. So the process that we followed was uh, a team was established from different uh, parts of the country and institutions. So we start with literature review. We identify the criteria and indicators. Then we had several consultative meetings with the communities and with the experts who are practicing these exclosures. Then we evaluate candidate practices. Uh, and finally, we assess the, assess the ecological and socioeconomic impacts on what we consider this as effective uh, practices. So we had nine sites in three agroecologies, and we have also conducted this socioeconomic impact, about 324 households and farmer group discussions and also key informants. And Finally, we identify the improvement measures that we need to make in order to scale up these exclusions. The results we found, uh, well, uh, we can say the exclosures have met uh, their intended objectives. So the first objective was to restore the, ec the, ecological, the ecology. So in most cases, we can see that there is a good regeneration of pioneer species, and in some areas also, uh, some of uh, the non-pioneer species. And it's also widely accepted, uh, especially in the northern and central part of the country. It's a widely accepted practice. For example, in only one region, you can find up to 1.5 million hectare 
of area is being uh, restored. And the community are also witnessed uh, some economical benefits. Uh, for example, we can have uh, uh, springs developed after this uh, rehabilitation. In one village, up to 600 springs. So people are now engaged in uh, irrigation development, uh, also in terms of carbon. Uh, and uh, this entails generally, from ecological perspective, uh, there are good practices that can be uh, scaled up. Uh, also, the community, as I said, they have positive views, but they also mentioned uh, by the community that there are shortcomings. Uh, for example, uh, if we see uh, in different uh, zo uh, ecological zones, the, uh, in the highlands, lowlands, and midlands, the trend is not the same. The response that we see in one uh, ecological zone may not be replicated in the other. So probably site-specific uh, intervention may be required. And there is also lack of ownership of rights because these exclosures are managed communally. So the rights is not yet maintained. So uh, uh, even though the uh, ecological uh, rehabilitation was uh, obtained, but the economic gains uh, is not as expected. So imp improvement measures were proposed for uh, scaling up in order to meet the uh, interests of the community. So what are the improvement measures? So the improvement measures we try to identify uh, in terms of ecologic uh, ecological services, for example, how we can improve the ecological services. So for example, uh, one of the uh, ideas that was proposed is to improve uh, uh, the native species, because communities are still want to see native species coming up. So with its method, like a broadcasting method, could be better than planting, for example. This is one of the options that uh, we found. The enrichment planting of some economical species uh, should be also introduced. And to increase the survival, uh, water harvesting structures uh, is also uh, recommended. And uh, implementing various site-specific post-planting care is also one of the problems that is lacked uh, in these ecological uh, interventions, exclusion interventions. So these are some of the ecological uh, interventions required if we need to scale up. And we, we also identified some management uh, improvement measures that we need to improve. One is to set clear objectives. We need to set uh, clear objectives for exclosures because uh, at the time of uh, establishment and development, these exclosures are set just for rehabilitation, but what is it's not known what is next after we rehabilitate. More, more economics is required. So we need to set management plan at the start. Mm, setting of mutually agreed upon objectives that should be addressed demands for various goods and services through negotiations with stakeholders. Uh, setting also time intervals to see the monitoring, like the Chinese case, for example, and also establish corridors because these are parts so we need uh, a large scale forest land restoration so we need to connect these exclosures so that there will be more gene flow and improvements uh, in the landscape also to increase the socioeconomic benefits define ownership types uh, bylaws are more of punitive in this case uh, in the current system but they should be rewarding uh, and in some areas, the, the judiciary uh, recognizes the bylaws, but in other areas not. So we have also to work on this one. Uh, the be benefit uh, sharing mechanism is also another problem. So there should be uh, clear benefit sharing mechanisms uh, between like the uh, communities near to the exclosures and, and far away from. Uh, also enrich exclosures with high value species like fruit trees, for example. Uh, 
uh, also to enhance the touristic value for, of exclosures insights with the potential of tourist attractions and improve and strengthen value chains for marketable uh, products. So generally the message is uh, it's good to consider exclosures as economic opportunity, like as not as an independent, but as an integral rural employment generation mechanism. Defined use rights, establishment and development should be also objective oriented. There should be at the start a management plan. Exclosures must be also considered as emerging opportunities like in climate change adaptation, mitigation, and also in livestock development, not only as site rehabilitation. And benefits from exclosure should be also uh, quantified in terms of the off-site benefits also. And they are also considered, they should be also considered as integrated landscape management options, not only the rural development, but also the, la the landscape. There should be also a proper policy legislation strategy and program focus on exclosures and recognition of bylaws by the judiciary system, Inform enforcement of existing policies and local bylaws, and also exclosures should be backed up with community-based incentive mechanisms to maintain their sustainability like financial other reward system and also uh, benefits from emerging systems. I thank you. Yeah.